Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Saturday, June 1st, 2024. I pray that you are in good spirit this morning and I pray that you are doing well. I also pray that your families are doing well. And as we continue to study God's word, I pray that we will receive a new experience and may our life be renewed. May we be closer drawn to him and may our eyes be open to the truth that is in God's word. Our reading today comes to us from Revelation chapter 4, reading from verse 1 to 11. And it says, After this I look, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And after this I look, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirit of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face like as, as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, which was and his and his to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen. Such a beautiful reading this morning. We give God thanks for his holy words. And here we see where John was getting a vision. He got a glimpse of heaven and he saw in heaven God's throne. And this throne represents God's supreme authority over the universe and his creative power that exists. So it is about his supreme authority. And it signifies also his dominion and his kingdom, right? Now, while John was in vision, he saw a couple of things. He explained that when he looked, he saw one sitting on the throne. And of course, this one that he saw was none other than God. And he said that the figure was like jasper and sardine stone. And then there was a rainbow that surrounded the throne. Now, the first thing I want to make clear here is that John did not say he saw a white man. Neither did he say he saw a black man. He saw someone like a jasper. So the glory of God, it was beaming so bright that he could not see no skin color. So when we are talking about God, we need to forget about what he looks like. I keep telling people what God look like is of little importance or no importance at all. What you should be concerned about is the fact that he came and he gave his life for you and for me. So whether he is black, white, pink, green or orange, it shouldn't matter. And I have seen where 
you know, groups and churches have become divided over these simple things. And I'm like, how is it that we claim to be following this man Jesus and yet still so divided on these things? But that's a story for another time. Then he also saw the rainbow. Now, according to Genesis and according to the Bible, what does the rainbow represent? The rainbow represents God's promise. And I know today the rainbow represents something totally different from a human standpoint. But I won't go into that subject today. But according to scripture, we understand that the rainbow is a representation of God's promise remember when he destroyed the world with the flood and he made a promise to Moses that he would not destroy this world with a flood anymore so the rainbow is a symbol of promise and hope that was given to humanity after the flood amen and then he said that he saw four seats around the throne of God and on those four seats he saw four and twenty elders now these Four and twenty elders, you could say, represents God's church. Or they represent purified church. So they were there around the throne of God. And what were they doing? They were giving worship to God. Imagine seated in the presence of God for all eternity. That is, words cannot fathom my thoughts cannot comprehend what that must be like and i want to go to heaven to experience those kinds of blessing amen and you should too and then he he said that he saw lightnings and thundering and there were seven lamps of fire that was burning before the throne and those seven lamps of fire represents what the seven spirits of god okay and the thundering and lightning do you remember mount sinai when moses met with god what was happening while moses was up there with god and when god oftentimes spoke to the children of israel what was happening thundering and lightning so god's voice is so powerful is so audible it is so magnificent that when he speaks the whole earth shakes and that is why the israelites they were so afraid for god to speak with them because they feared that they would have died and so they beg that moses speak to god and then relay the message to them so we don't serve a puny puny god we don't serve a god of statue we don't serve a god that cannot do anything our god is alive and well and that is why it is so important for us to give God the praise that he deserves it is important this is why we were created to give glory to our creator we weren't created to glorify ourselves no the four and twenty elders they were around God's throne what were they doing they weren't glorifying themselves they weren't looking at their white robes and looking how they look spiffy and look you know radiant no all they could do was soak up the glory of god and bask in his goodness and give him praise for who he is then he went on to speak about the four beasts and i remember the first time i read this and i think about it i'm like these four beasts sound like something that you would see in your nightmare that's that's my first thought when i read this because i'm like eyes in their in the front of their heads and eyes in the back of their head eyes on their wings what kind of creatures are these even now sometimes it's hard to comprehend because i am used to people with just two eyes or animal with just two eyes i've never seen someone with three eyes four eyes but that is how powerful god is that is how creative god is and our little finite mind cannot comprehend these things and that is why we have to just accept them and i know a lot of people will say how can you accept something that you don't understand but if you work with that logic then my friend you are in serious trouble because our mind will never be able to comprehend god and how he does things 
and that is why we have to trust him that is why we have to rely on his leadership and his guidance because he is god and he knows what is best for us amen so the description of these beasts as he said that you had one like a lion then you had another one look like a calf and you had another one look like a man he had a face of a man and the fourth beast he said that it was like a flying eagle four description so it therefore means that these four bees they were very critical and they were also very powerful so the main purpose of these four bees was to give worship to god constantly so that was their main purpose these four bees they were there flying around god's throne and they were doing what giving god worship and praise so you see in the presence of god there's always worship and so when we go into the presence of god when we go to the sanctuary we go only for one reason and that is to give god praise and that is why sometimes the things that takes place in the sanctuary of god sometimes the bickering and the foolishness that we do sometimes i know god is not pleased and I don't know how is it that we can't understand that it's not about us. It's never been about us. And we need to stop making it about us. We go to the sanctuary of God to give God praise. And that is what we should do. That is what we should do. And if we focus on that, then we won't have time to allow the devil to distract us in one way or another. And he spoke about the sea of glass. I've never seen Sea of Glass, but I would like to, to see that. And I would like to experience what that is like, walking on a sea of glass. Whoa, that sound amazing. That sound like something in a fairy tale, isn't it? But this is what is awaiting us if we are faithful and if we make it there. And that is why we must do our utmost best to surrender to God so that he can save us, give our life over to him don't let anybody discourage you and tell you all kind of things and to turn you away from jesus let them say what they want to say let them call you fools let them mock you let them say all manner of things what they want to say but you remain faithful to god because as i always say a lot of these people who try to discourage christians and try to tear down christians they don't understand what they're doing their minds are clouded and consumed by darkness and ignorance and therefore they become terrified of what they do not understand yes they are terrified all because they do not understand and the, the sad thing about it they are not interested to understand all they do is to find ways to discredit christianity or to discredit the word of god to say that we are following some kind of fable i don't have time for that i don't have time for that i know who god is to me and you should have an experience with god so that when you are bombarded with this kind of discouragement you are able to stand and remain resolute to your belief amen may god give us strength and as the bees continue to give God worship and they continue to give God honor and they continue to praise his name forever and they are singing holy, holy, holy and they are lifting up his name and they are calling out his title and they are, they are saying all kind of amazing thing. God who was, God is, God who is to come. They are just excited about God. And so they are echoing it from the bottom of their soul. Because what? They have an experience with God and they see God and they know who God is. And that is why I believe that unless you and I have an experience with God, there's no way we can give God worship. And that's just what I believe. Only those who have an experience with God. And I'm not talking about a, a, a pretend experience. I'm talking about a real experience. Who have a connection with God. 
only those people can sing about his excitement or their excitement about the God that they serve. And it's like it's, it becomes a frenzy now in heaven. The four and twenty elders join in the, in the praise and they bow down before God and they cast down their crowns and they start to sing holy and they start to say holy, holy and they start to give God worship forever. And they say that they understand and know that God is worthy. Do you believe that God is worthy? Now, if you don't believe that God is worthy of worship, then what's going to happen? You're not going to give him any worship. If you don't believe that God is worthy of honor and power, then you are not going to give him the glory and the power that is due to his name. You're not going to worship him is what I'm saying. You are going to stand back because you don't believe in him and you don't accept his sovereignty and his power. But this morning, I just want to encourage somebody that we serve an awesome God. We serve a God that is not like any other God. In fact, there is no other God but God. There is only one God. But my point this morning is that we serve the God of the universe and we must never underestimate him and take him for granted. We need to give him worship. Heaven is a beautiful place. Heaven is real and I want to be there and I know that you want to be there too. And I pray that as we continue to hold on to Jesus, as we continue to look to him, may we never give up. May we never look back because it won't be a pretty experience if we should lose out on this awesome experience god bless you all and may god keep you faithful including myself amen